remember watching a League of Legends video a long time ago. This, this is not a League of Legends video, by the way. We're not going to cut into me playing Riven or something. <laughs> but I remember watching a video a long time ago where somebody was interviewing a bunch of, of high elo and pro players. And they asked them, what is it that separates you from low elo players and from the common man, basically? And, and they gave all their run-of-the-mill answers to save face and, and to save people's feelings. They said, oh, we just play more. Uh, you know, we just put more time into the game or whatever. But they cut to one person in particular who I, I cannot remember for the life of me right now. But that person said, and this stuck with me, they said, I am just able to focus on the game more. What separates me from everyone else is that I put more focus into the game. And it would be years before I really understood what he meant by that. Because at the time, I'm like a bronze player. You know, in the old MMR system on League of Legends, I think it was like three, 400 MMRs at the very bottom of the totem pole. And I, I would have YouTube videos running in the background, podcast, music, everything. I'd have every distraction possible on my second monitor. And in my head, I'd say, well, I'm concentrating enough. That's not why I'm low ELO. But now, all these years later, playing Street Fighter, I understand what he's saying. Hey, before we fade into the gameplay and all that, uh, you, you know the drill by now. I'm trying to hit 10,000 subs by the end of the year. I don't know if that's possible, if it's rational, or if it's even a realistic goal to set, but why not try? So if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing, and thank you so much for watching. We don't fully understand how our brain works, right? You know, if we did, we'd be superhuman. But what we do understand, and what the ancient Romans even understood, right? We talked about uh, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius a, a couple videos ago, right? A book that I'm reading. What they e even understood thousands of years ago is that distractions take your focus away from what you're really trying to do. Distractions are the enemy of progress. It stops your learning. It stops everything that you're doing. They're obstacles that you put in your own way. If I could just read you a quick quote from Meditations, uh, Marcus Aurelius says, do external things distract distract you, then make time for yourself to learn something worthwhile. Stop letting yourself be pulled in all directions. That's how you avoid wasting your life and wasting your time. Because sometimes we feel like our passions are a waste of our time, right? For me, it's fighting games. Some days I get on, I get angry, I get off, and I say, what a waste of time. What am I doing? I could be out pursuing something that society deems uh, useful. And in that moment, in that vulnerable moment, you remind yourself that you fell into this. You didn't choose love. You fell into it. That's why we say we fall in love. We stumble upon it and we embrace it. And whether that's a person, or whether it's a thing, or whether it's something that you love to do, accept that you're passionate about it, and you either double down and you say that you're gonna learn more, and you're gonna figure it out, and you'll get through it, or you give up. But that's far too sad of a decision to make. So for me, I'm gonna double down on this YouTube thing, and on this fighting game thing, and we're gonna learn. And now that we can accept that, Let's talk about what our barriers to learning are, our distractions. I think some of them are definitely physical. Some of them are tangible and we can control them. These are things like YouTube videos on the other monitor or podcasts playing in the background, things that actively take your attention away from the game and make you think about what's happening on that other monitor. Sometimes these were intentional distractions for me because I didn't want to think about what was happening on the screen. Maybe I was losing a lot that day. Or maybe I'm losing the current game that I'm in and I'm just checked out. You know, I'm just kind of coping by listening to whatever's going on and, and distracting myself from the inevitable that's happening on my other screen. And other times I, I used to think that maybe the game isn't enough entertainment for me. It's not enough stimulation, especially when I was playing League of Legends and maybe I'd get queued support or something, right? I'm playing brand support. Big deal. You know, I I'm probably not going to have fun this game. So I'd throw on a podcast or a, a YouTube video or something. When in reality, if you just turn off that other distraction and you play the game with your full attention, it, it is uh, enough distraction on its own. You know, it's enough entertainment for you. You realize very quickly it doesn't take very much to entertain you, but things like, uh, I, I don't want to sound like uh, a newscaster or something <laughs> or like a boomer, but things like social media and having all these different apps that you scroll through every single day and you need all those different hits of dopamine make you feel like you crave more and more entertainment than you actually do and it's okay to admit that that's the first step to sort of getting over it i think when people bring that up they bring it up in a very negative connotation you know older people will bring it up in very negative connotation your parents and everything like that and let's say, oh, you guys are hooked on your phones and the social media and everything like that. When in reality, uh, you, you just have to accept that you've been a victim of your uh, environment and you can change that. It, it, nobody's forcing you to open Twitter every single day right when you wake up, you know. You've just become accustomed to that. Just like I've become accustomed to tabbing out a Street Fighter in every single loading screen and doing something on my other monitor. It's a distraction to make you not feel things, you know. You, you don't want to feel bad about losing that last game. So I am going to tab out and I'm going to get on Twitter or I don't want to feel 
anxious loading into this next game, so I'm gonna tab out and get another dopamine hit before I try and play this game. It's like hitting a vape or something, you know? You just need that next hit to get you over. Now I kinda wanna talk about the things that you don't have uh, as much control over. At least not yet. These are more mental things, more emotional things, uh, stuff that you don't pay attention to. You just feel them, they just come upon you, and you sometimes feel the need to act on them. But an exercise that I learned from uh, some like self-help YouTube video that really helped me out was just paying more attention to these thoughts when they come to you, you know, negative or positive. Like in this moment, why do I feel so angry or sad or, uh, you know, disappointed and vice versa? You know, what uh, about this moment makes me so happy and how can I recreate it? But it's mostly about thinking uh, about these negative thoughts and turning them into positive thoughts. Because anytime we get angry, there's an alternative, which is to just be happy. <laughs> there's two courses of actions you can take in a situation and one is to think negatively about it or to choose the alternative and think about what would make you happy in that moment and that's kind of helped me lately and by cutting out some of those negative thoughts you, you don't get as emotionally distressed you don't start reaching for dopamine in other places through distractions you just kind of live in the moment a lot more and, and you turn these situations that you run into time and time again into more positive uh outcomes but i'm no self-help coach or, or a guru or anything like that i'm not trying to sell you a book or my course uh, these are just some thoughts that i had that i think uh, can help you guys out so i hope this video found somebody who needed it and if it did please consider subscribing. I'll talk to you again very soon. And thanks so much for watching, as well as subscribing. Thank you guys for subscribing so much lately. I think we've gone up like 100 subs uh, since I started asking at the beginning. So it's obviously working. And if you're tired of it, I'm sorry, but it's too effective for me to stop at this point. But yeah, like, comment, everything like that. And uh, thanks for watching. Talk to you again soon.